Hi everyone, this is Hei Hyun Cho. I am a PhD student of Arizona State University. In this talk, I'm going to present how we can link kernel pointers through uninitialized stack variables in Linux kernels. Stack variables are called automatic variables because um, those are allocated and deallocated automatically when a program enters and leaves the scope of them. Uninitialized automatic variables have undefined values until they are assigned valid values. Even though we initialize the stack variables, the stack memory allocated for local variables can contain undefined values because of padding bytes inserted in a struct during the compilation time. If such uninitialized data is copied to the user space, sensitive kernel information can be leaked. Here is an example of a real world vulnerability that leaks four bytes of kernel data to the user space. In this example, four padding bytes inserted to the map struct caused an information leak when this struct is copied to the user space. This type of vulnerabilities violates the basic security principle of operating system kernels. The applications are not permitted by the processor to address kernel memory for preventing an application from damaging the kernel. Also, any data inside the kernel must not be copied to applications as well. This fundamental partition of memory space has contributed to the current designs of operating system kernels. Information leaks caused by in uninitialized stack variables break this principle and can bring severe security problems if leaked information is important or can be used to attack the kernel. Unfortunately, information leak vulnerabilities are the most prevalent type of vulnerabilities in Linux kernel. Within the last two years, kernel memory sanitizer discovered more than 100 information leak bugs by fuzzing USB device drivers only. Furthermore, many information leak vulnerabilities are commonly believed to be of low risk. As a result, many uninitialized data uses do not get sufficient attention from developers or security researchers. Some of them are not assigned any CV entries, and in some cases, their corresponding patches are not merged into Linux kernel for a long time. This table shows the statistics of 87 Linux kernel CVEs that are related to uninitialized data uses. We can see that uh, most of these CVEs are stack-based information leaks. However, evaluating the severity of these CVEs is extremely difficult because no public exploit is available for any of them. Exploiting these vulnerabilities to leak sensitive information usually requires manual and complicated manipulation of the kernel layout that is costly and time consuming. Another point is um, only one CVE mentions about the potential of leaking kernel pointers and bypassing KSLR, which leaves an impression that these vulnerabilities have low security impact. In this work, we demonstrate the actual exploitability and severity of information leak bugs in Linux kernels by proposing a generic and automated approach that converts stack-based information leaks in Linux kernels into vulnerabilities that leak kernel pointer values. These vulnerabilities are easier to exploit and are more severe than what is generally believed. Specifically, we focus on leaking pointer values that are pointing to corner functions or the corner stack. 
These leaked corner point of values can be used to bypass corner, de corner defenses such as KSLR, which is an essential step in modern Linux corner exploits. The first challenge to leak corner pointer values is identifying the distance to an uninitialized memory cell from the base address of the corner stack, which we term a leak offset. Computing the leak offset allows us to find the exact location where corner pointer values should be stored. We identify the leak offset through applying a technique called stack footprinting. The next challenge is finding a way to place corner pointer values at the specific leak offset. To achieve this goal, we propose two techniques. With help of the Linux test project, we find syscalls that can be used to store corner pointer values at the leak offset. And we propose a uh, Connor's text frame technique using the extended Berkeley packet filter. <clears throat> On a 64-bit Linux corner, when a corner data leak is larger than eight bytes, we can obtain the values of the whole pointer. However, in many, in many vulnerabilities, the size of memory leak is smaller than eight bytes. So we cannot obtain a complete pointer value. For handling such small leaks, we reason a possible range of the unleaked value through the guess and check method, by which we can identify the base address of the corner stack. Our proposed approach takes POVs that triggers a stack-based information leak as input and analyze them to check the exploitability and generate exploits. To compute the leak offset, we use the stack footprinting technique. First, we fill the corner stack with offset information to each byte of the stack from the base address. We store one byte of offset information, which starts from zero to FF in hex, in each byte for every eight bytes. This mechanism allows us to footprint 2,024 bytes of the corner stack. Even though we cannot print the entire kernel stack, 2,000 bytes are enough to deal with most system calls. This is because roughly 90% of system calls only use then less than 1,260 bytes of the stack. We then um, trigger an information leak vulnerability. Because the offset information has been filled into the stack, we can directly check the offset. Lastly, we compute a leak offset by using the offset information from the corner. If the offset information copied from the corner is four, as shown in the slide, we need to find the pointer values that can be stored at an offset base minus 24. Once the leak offset has been identified, we need to find the system call with specific arguments that can store a corner pointer at the leak offset. To this end, we utilize the Linux test project, which provides concrete test cases for all system calls. We supplement three additional steps onto each Cisco test case in the RTP. First, we fill the corner stack with the magic value. Next, we execute a test case of a system call defined in the LTP, and we inspect the corner stack to check if there are corner pointers that are pointing either corner function or corner stack. If there are such corner pointers, we record the context information, which consists of stack offset, type of a corner pointer, Cisco name and arguments. The recorded information is used later to find the Cisco that can store a corner pointer to the leak offset. Therefore, 
once we have lizard, we can use the recorded context information for finding a syscore without repeating this. Another way to store corner pointer that are pointing to the corner stack is use the BPF. The BPF is a virtual machine inside the corner, which was designed to support for filtering packets requested by user space applications. Users can request to load and run BPF programs in the corner. A BPF program has its own stack and this stack is allocated inside the corner stack. Also, a BPF program can use a register called the frame pointer, which points to the base address of the BPF program's stack. So um, by crafting the BPF instructions, we can store the frame pointer value to the stack of a BPF program until the stack is full. In other words, we can store an address of the corner stack up to 512 bytes inside the corner stack. Therefore, if we can leak the frame pointer value, we can identify the layout of the corner stack because we know the base address of it. If an information leak vulnerability leaks eight bytes of data, and we can store a corner stack address at the leak offset by the stack spraying, it is possible to have a complete corner stack address. Unfortunately, the leak size of many stack-based information leak vulnerabilities is smaller than eight bytes. Because the corner stack is aligned by the size of a memory page, we need the most important 52 bits of a corner stack address to get the base address. To handle this problem, we investigated the static verifier of the BPF virtual machine to check if arithmetic operations on the frame pointer is possible. We found that some arithmetic operations such as a bit shift are not possible but only add and sub operations can be used with arbitrary immediate values. More importantly, these operations can be executed even if the lizard is beyond the range of a BPF program stack. We also found that after executing these arithmetic operations, the modified frame pointer value can be stored at the corner stack. By leveraging this unrestricted behavior of a BPF, pro BPF program, we deal with such small leaks using the guess and check method. For example, if the value of the frame pointer is the hex value as shown in the slide, and if we know only the first four bytes, we can start guessing by subtracting an arbitrary value. In the given example, after the subtraction, the last byte of known frame pointer value changes from four to three. So we can know that the hidden data is smaller than the arbitrary number. Next, we can subtract another arbitrary number that is smaller than the previous one. We repeat this reasoning procedure until we can obtain the corner stack base address. First, we evaluated the effectiveness of our system core testing framework. To this end, we render modified LTP on Ubuntu 18.04. The figure illustrates that how many contacts can store sensitive pointer values for each stack memory of set less than 2,298. The experimental lizard also showed that our modified LTP framework can find syscalls to store corner pointer values at almost every stack offset when offsets are larger than 440. Record that for each corner, we need to run the LTP framework once to record the context information. Then we can simply pick a context from the recorded data for storing a corner pointer value at the identified leak offset. In this work, we analyzed four CVEs and one security patch that could not become a CVE entry. Let's see the first two CVEs and one security, 
on security patch first. Um, we speculate that the impact of these vulnerabilities is deemed low because the size of information leak is only four bytes and which are not enough to host an entire point on 64-bit Linux systems. And in the official common message of the security patch, a corner developer mentioned that there should be no danger as the stack leak guaranteed that previously meaningless random data was being returned. However, we could bypass KSLR after analyzing it. This result demonstrates that the necessity of our approach for, for providing the severity of information leak bugs in Linux kernels. Um, with this CVE, of which um, CVSS score is 2.1, we show that how a four byte leak vulnerability can be exploited to identify the kernel stack base. We sprayed the kernel stack using the BPF program and we could identify the kernel stack base with the guess and check method. Lastly, we evaluated one CVE um, the CVSS score of this vulnerability is 5.0, which is significantly higher than the other CVEs that we evaluated. Interestingly, we found that this one byte leak vulnerability cannot be exploited through our analysis. Um, the leak offset of this vulnerability always becomes zero before the vulnerable function executes. Therefore, the vulnerability always leaks zero, even though we can successfully store the corner pointer at the leak offset. In this paper, we proposed a generic approach to exploit uses of uninitialized stack data in Linux kernels to leak corner pointer values that are pointing to either corner functions or corner stack. These leaked pointer values can then be used to be KSLR and mount future attacks against Linux kernels. Our evaluation results show that we can effectively analyze and exploit stack-based information leak vulnerabilities through the proposed approach. And we expect our findings will help adjust CVSS scoring for information leak bugs inside the Linux kernels. Thanks for listening.